Are you experiencing squash problems? Well, if you are growing squash, chances are you will be experiencing squash problems at some point. Whether it's from squash vine borers or it's from powdery mildew, ants, any other type of pest, these plants are very susceptible to a variety of different pests. You're gonna have to start planning a course of action before there's a problem. If you wanna learn more, stick around. I have some tips and tricks to extend the life of your plants. That way you can extend the harvest. A few things that you'll need to help protect these plants through the growing season. Definitely get some good scissors. You'll need those the whole time for trimming, aluminum foil, a good weed barrier disc, or you can use even a Dixie cup, and a great homemade organic fungicide. Don't worry, I have a great recipe. If you're growing these plants, inevitably the first pest that will make its appearance will be powdery mildew, especially if you're starting these plants in the springtime. When it's really humid out or it's raining a lot or the leaves haven't had a chance to dry, a fungus is going to start to appear on the leaves in little circular formations, little like kind of clumping circular formations that are white and powdery looking. The good news is, is that it's very, very treatable. You just have to stand top of it and if you notice that any of these leaves have been really really attacked to no end they're starting to brown they're starting to yellow it's best to cut those leaves off with the good pair of scissors that you have make sure you don't cross contaminate the leaves because the powdery mildew is really spreadable what you need is a little one pint sprayer about one teaspoon of vinegar about a quarter of a teaspoon of dish soap and about a half a teaspoon of baking soda and then fill that up with water shake it until everything is combined generously spray all over the leaves you're going to notice that is going to take effect and start killing the fungus very quickly you're just going to have to stay on top of it i've also heard of people using milk to also kill the powdery mildew for whatever reason it works they don't really have a lot of scientific reason behind it but milk will definitely help too if you're gonna grow squash plants, you must know that there is a horrible, horrible pest called a squash vine borer that will literally destroy it. It is so hard to come back from this attack, but the good news is, is that there are things that we can do to protect these plants ahead of time. What you need to do is understand this unfortunate pest. It's a moth that looks super similar to a wasp. It has red wings and a few white dots on it. You might be gardening and think, oh, there's a wasp in my garden. Not gonna think anything of it. Well, it might be a squash vine borer. What they do is they lay their eggs at the base of the plant and the little larvae, they find the base and they eat through the plant destroying it from the inside out. Absolutely horrible, right? Well, there's a few ways we can protect these plants. First, we need to understand how those squash vine borers work. They come out of hibernation anytime from early June through early July. So basically, you're on high alert from June through July. The good news is they only reproduce one time a year, so you really only need to worry about these particular bugs through those two months out of the year. It's important to start coming up with preliminary measures to protect these plants towards the end of May because you never know when they're going to start to emerge and start to lay their eggs, which therefore will destroy your plant. The protection methods are easy enough. What we're doing is we are cutting off a few pieces of foil and wrapping them around the base of the plant. This will prevent the larvae from eating through the plant because they're gonna be hit with foil and they can't eat through that. Paired with the foil, I also like to use this method of coconut husks that are intended to be a weed barrier for various different plants and trees. You can get all different sizes of these. I will include a link below so that you can see where I purchased these on Amazon. I got, I believe, the six inch ones. I'm going to secure these to the base with a little garden um, stake. So with all of that said, it is so important for you to be rotating your crops every single season. You don't want to plant squash plants specifically in the same area. What's gonna happen is, is those 
vine borers are going to continue to lay their eggs there regardless of these methods and they're going to continue to try to destroy those crops. So if they're in a different bed or a different area every season, they're going to be emerging and it's going to be less chances that they're going to destroy those specific squash plants. Another pest you have to worry about are stink bugs. You're going to see a lot of green kind of jelly-like eggs underneath the leaves. When you see that, it's important to get a good organic neem oil and start to apply a spray on the underside of those leaves as often as the application suggests. You have to stay on top of it. One of my favorite ways to get rid of eggs as well is just to smush them or just spray them off with a hose. If you're noticing a lot of ants in your garden, chances are you'll see aphids come shortly after that. Ants will start to farm aphids because what they do is they feed on the underside of the leaves of a lot of different plants, including the squash plants, tomato plants, and they get the nectar from those plants. They kind of work together to not be so good for your actual plants. What you can do for aphids is just spray them off. You can can put some plants in the garden such as kale plants that are really resistant to aphids and they can um, act kind of as like a, a bait plant. You can also put banana peels around the base of your plants. Aphids don't like banana peels. I found that that works really well. Another method that has worked for me with aphids is to put a yellow bowl full of water underneath the plant that's being affected by the aphids and they like they jump into it, it's really weird, but it definitely works. That's everything I have today to help protect your squash plants. If you enjoyed this video, or if you found it to be helpful, please be sure to give it a like and also hit that subscribe button down below for more gardening, homesteading videos, as well as farm to table recipes and DIY projects. Thank you so much for watching. <music>